It feels like this is going to be an every Saturday occurrence for the rest of the summer. We've got another Auburn football commitment to talk about on the defensive line. Let's talk about who that is and what it means for Hugh Freeze and Auburn football. War Eagle and welcome back to the channel. My name is Kyle here at E2C Network where we share the whole Auburn experience. As you're watching or listening today, be sure to drop a comment down below about this particular topic. We'd love to hear your thoughts as we're sharing ours. We do always want to remind you of our friends at Alumni Hall. As an affiliate of theirs, we can attest to how great they are in helping you get geared up for game day, which is just around the corner. Make sure you visit them in store in Auburn, Opelika, or Huntsville, or you can visit them online by checking out the link in our description, that very first link. Don't miss out on your opportunity to gear up for game day with Alumni Hall. Auburn football has been surprising and flipping people for a long time now, the 2024 recruiting cycle, especially when it comes to this summer. It's only been a week since we last talked about a commitment. That was Jalewis Solomon. Make sure you check out the video that we did about him for all the information that you need to know about that commitment. But let's talk about this one now, a brand new defensive lineman being added to the class. Who is it? It is TJ Lindsay. It makes it the 10th commitment that is a defensive commitment in this summer, but the 12th overall so far this summer that the Tigers have picked up. They beat out some big names like Texas, Texas A&M, Miami, and even good old Alabama. As always, let's talk about the timeline of events that brought us to the point of his commitment today. We always look at when they first got their offer from Auburn, and that was back in January of 2023. Not too long ago, this staff saw fit to extend an offer to him. He did take an official visit to Auburn at the very beginning of June and had planned to come back to Bidcat Weekend, but unfortunately he was not able to attend, but apparently his parents did come and make a visit themselves, which was gotta be an encouraging sign for those that were discouraged when he didn't make the appearance to Big Cat Weekend. He did eventually take official visits to most of his other top five before finally setting a commitment date, and now we know the answer. Now that you know how he got here, let's give you some facts to know about this particular commitment. He comes from Bradenton, Florida, and plays for IMG Academy. He's considered a three to a four-star prospect on the defensive line. His measurables, he's listed at six foot three, somewhere between 270 and 290. I found some differing opinions on what his actual weight was, so we're just gonna use that range. But it still puts him nicely in an interior defensive lineman position. You can probably think defensive tackle. Usually I like to give you a few stats to go along with those facts, but unfortunately I really couldn't find any solid information online listed for him. But I can tell you this, this guy is very much an athlete. He's a two-sport athlete, plays football as well as basketball, at least he has in his past. Apparently his sophomore year was the year where he really broke out and grabbed the attention of everybody on the recruiting cycles. And then obviously he caught the attention of IMG Academy. Most of you know that if you end up going there, you're very well sought after in terms of a prospect in your respective sport. So that should kind of speak to the stats that he probably has out there. And now a few storylines about this particular commitment. I could kind of make a case that this is a dividend from Big Cat Weekend. Even though we already talked about that he didn't attend, apparently his parents did, the groundwork was kind of laid by that because his intentions were to be there and be part of that incredible event, which probably helped when he took official visits to some of his top five, especially Texas and Texas A&M. Let's just talk about that for a second. That's no joke to go out and battle those two big names in the state of Texas and win out for a recruit like this especially if you throw Alabama into that conversation as well. And this is part of the rebuild of the front for Auburn on the offensive and defensive side of the ball. And it's just the beginning stages of that in this class. Now that you know about the player, let's talk about what it means for Auburn football. We always start with the numbers game. And this is the 16th commitment in the 2024 class, all from the high school ranks. That makes it 10 total on the defensive side of the ball in the class, and now the second defensive lineman. We now want to answer the question, what might his playing opportunities be when he arrives here onto campus at Auburn University? We always stress that you plan on these guys redshirting as young people, but let's take a look at the depth chart so we kind of know what the opportunities that might be presenting himself. If you look at how it breaks down, you're expecting about three seniors to leave, Messiah Nasili Kite, Marcus Harris, and Lawrence Johnson. You've got a large crop of juniors, about four of them, and then a next up group of like Darren Reed, Wilkie Denod, Steven Johnson, and even a brand new one in this class, Malik Blockton, on top of who else is already gonna be here. So for me, when I look at the opportunities to play early, 
they look on the smaller side, but I never rule anybody out when they get in there, get into a program and see what they can accomplish. I always like to talk about where these recruits come from and recruiting pipelines that are being created for now and in the future. This is the second commit from the state of Florida in this class, even though he's only been in the state of Florida for like barely even a year at this point. So you can kind of say this is the second one from the state of Arkansas, which he's originally from as well which is kind of an interesting dynamic there. Maybe two potential pipelines have been built through one recruit. And lastly, let's look at what this particular commitment means for the 2024 class, but even more specifically at the defensive lineman position in this class. And we're gonna look at what a breakdown of the roster and what it means going forward might look like. If you look at that, you're gonna see currently 14 defensive linemen on the roster. My estimation is 11 of those have the best chance of playing. It breaks down to three seniors, four juniors, no sophomores, and four freshmen. Now, if you also talk about who's coming in this class, we know this individual, TJ Lindsay, along with Malik Blockton. That means two of those three spots have now been filled that will be vacated by those three seniors leaving. And with a few juniors either deciding to go early somewhere or go somewhere else, like a transfer situation, that means some more spots are going to open up. For me, that means that there's plenty of room left for some other defensive linemen to come in. We'll just have to wait and see who those are going to be. So there you have it. My thoughts on your brand new commitment for the Auburn Tigers. TJ Lindsay would love to know your thoughts about him down in the comments section below. Be sure to do that because it helps enter you into that subscriber giveaway, which is almost done at 4,000 subscribers. You need to be subscribed, so make sure you take care of that too. As always, check out the links in the description for ways that you can help support Alumni Hall and us here at E2C Network, where we share the whole Auburn experience. War Eagle.